Yes, the epic hugging match continues. Yeah, until Bertholdt falls on you. And there he goes. <laughs> Imagine. The steam. This will give him an out. It's funny how this steam ends up being so overpowered. Such a simple skill, but how do you defeat it? Are they actually going to get Eren? I kind of have been wanting that to happen for a while. I know maybe it's supposed to not want that, but I think it'll be really interesting to see where that goes. Yeah, there you go. And they can't approach him. And Bird Hulk can get out now. There he is. They got him. Wow. Eren! <laughs> this is crazy, but awesome. Oof, awkward. I see. It was Armin's turn to Eren this time. <laughs> well, that intro did not disappoint. I was half expecting there to be a flashback away from the action. But yeah, they finally managed to get Eren for whatever reason. Who knows? Maybe they can resolve everything with dialogue. Possible. Possible. Not possible, but... The Hunters. Meanwhile, these normal lame titans At this point, from what we've seen, I'm guessing that all these normal titans are, are from people, actually. At first, it seemed like they were separate man-like creatures that were maybe created, but it seems like they're just transformed humans. Hard at work, I see, Pixis. Hey, look who it is! Yeah, my thinking after the end of season one was that everything was going to fall down on Erwin really hard because of what happened with Annie and the inner walls. But as we saw, it does work in his favor too, right? Because if these people just live among you, who else is going to deal with it but the Survey Corps, right? The military police are not really equipped. The garrison, what are they going to do? Shoot cannons at it? It seems like Erwin and Pixis are counting on some political leverage from this. Count your blessings. No, no, no. How naive. Nah, they're all talk, though. He's gonna cut right through the BS with this. Oh, oh, really? What a surprise. <laughs> a bit, yeah. Imagine getting the shock at all of this at once. We got it kind of gradually, but there were three more. Yes, I know. <laughs> so calm. He must have expected it, I guess. Thank you, Daddy Hans. <laughs> Cracker. Very nutritious. Wonderful. Here's our flashback. Right, because Eren thinks the boys are afraid of him when really they're afraid of Mikasa and only Mikasa. How are these three still alive? They don't deserve to breathe. <laughs> oh, look who it is. Interesting. It seems like it's development for Hans and the kids. He knows them really well. This guy's the real victim. <laughs> oh man, poor Armin. This is turning into this huge brawl just from the, the kids. The escalation of this scene, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Remember that time Armin, Eren, and Mikasa destroyed the whole city? This is what peacetime looks like. Yeah, it, it's, it's already turned serious. We are way past that. That was thousands of dollars of property damage. <laughs> right, it's just bread. This is not proportionate. He just cannot let it go <laughs> until they're dead. Why are these childhood flashbacks so bizarre? They were the craziest kids. So what was the meaning of that flashback? First of all, like I said, I'm happy to see Hans reemerge and for his development with the kids to continue. But also I'm guessing this is like a reminder or a repeat of this theme with Mikasa, how she just feels like she needs to protect Eren at any cost. Like her life is not worth anything or her life is only worth 
protecting Eren, and now she's separated from him, it's sort of unclear how she's going to handle that. And Armin has always sort of been the one with the reasonable head on his shoulders, and now he has to deal with this as well. Eren ran off again, although this time he was abducted. But he's in danger. You don't remember? They could be anywhere by now. What do you expect them to do, really? That's not what hurts. <laughs> it's her heart. Even though I don't agree with Mikasa's worldview, I can sympathize completely with this kind of thing, like this kind of feeling. We're all born basically knowing nothing. And we have to very quickly form some kind of structure for the way we think the world works. And I think that if you feel like you're in danger, you feel threatened, that's an extra threatening sensation when you're young. And so you just grab things, right? You just grab things that you think will keep you alive. And we saw that Mikasa was at one time probably a pretty well-adjusted and happy kid until that horrible tragedy with her parents, where she basically lost everything and her entire world was destroyed. The only glimmer of hope in all that was Eren, who represented salvation and strength and self-reliance and justice and all these things at once. And so she just totally latched onto that, which is completely understandable, because she needed that. She needed something or else she's just living in the abyss. And then she's going to carry that for a long time because to challenge that or to find other things that are healthier reawakens that base state that she left for Eren. It would be like she was returning in some form to that horrible, turbulent state right before Eren showed up and saved her. And of course, nobody wants to go there. And so instead of facing that, or instead of, you know, coping with those emotions, the natural response is going to be, well, I need that back because that is my world. That's my whole world. And it's that or the abyss of my childhood. And even though this is a very extreme case, I think that's probably true for just about everyone, at least in some way, where there are constructs that we build in order to patch a hole or ameliorate some danger, and then that structure persists sort of unchallenged because to challenge it would mean to go all the way back to that state and deal with it like it's the first time. And so those things just exist as baggage. And that's why when there's like a big change or something like that, something that threatens that, it feels like, you know, the whole world is collapsing. So a little sympathy for Mikasa, even though, you know, She's obviously over, over fixated on Eren. And there's the scarf. As weird as it is, I, I would take that as a compliment in a way, you know, that he trusts that they're there. He has that support already. He feels free to go out and come back. But oddly, that pushes Eren away too, because Eren wants to prove himself you know, to be independent. That was part of the problem with that fight, is that he was mad Mikasa was intervening. Sometimes you gotta let people go. <laughs> Daddy Hans. One of the reasons I love this so much is because the kids really need this. You know, they really need parents. Did you read the info card too? They've been upgraded, so they taste not too bad. It's the same thing. Yep. だろ。町の学大将と巨人とじゃ背の高さが違いすぎるよ。まあ、しかし、あの馬が6に剣が。I know, he just got his first kill too. First Titan kill. Eren has killed more humans than he's killed Titans. <laughs> <laughs> if Eren has anything, it's conviction, tenacity, drive. That, I think, is probably the most heroic quality for Eren. Yes, this is what I wanted from Hans. I like how he disguised his heroism as cowardice. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm the laziest person ever. All I want to do is just drink, hang out, nap. And that's why we're going to defeat the Armored and Colossal Titan. <laughs> <laughs> Look how well these kids respond just to, you know, the most simple of mentoring. They feel so deprived to me, which makes total sense. Yeah, everything's okay now. <laughs> Speaking of needing mentoring. Yeah, she has stakes in this too. Yeah,知らせていくんですよ。やつらを追いかける理由が多すぎだろう。俺はまだ信じられねえからよ。ライナーもベルトルドも敵だったなんて。やつらの口から直接聞くまでは。I really like that reaction. Connie is very stable, very rational. So now we have a time limit. Ooh, 
Ooh, and she was right. Is he missing something, or is it is it me? Good to see Ymir is awake. She's also missing something. Oh, no, 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 no. This is going to be a cliffhanger. Damn it. Just give him enough time to have a conversation. I really want to hear what Reiner has to say. Yeah, you didn't get me this time, did you? I'm still angry, though. <laughs> so this felt like one of those in-between episodes, you know, between big action points. But I still really loved it for a couple reasons. Like, one, Hans is a character I've been interested in since the very beginning. And he kind of faded away a bit. And I'm like, oh, is that it for Hans? But now he's back. And he provides something that, for me, is much needed, you know? In this show, my concern is that it really will just be all about the darkness right and that there won't be any lights and so when i get it i'm always really thrilled to see that and for me the hans conversation with the kids was was a point of of greatness you know it's a point of like hope in a terrible situation where you know he he kind of masks himself as this loser drunko but he obviously has a kind heart you know like what happened with aaron's mom is something he probably carries with him to this day he was always looking out for them you see in the flashback that he was always aware of them and he always admired their qualities and he you know just the fact that he knows about them means he cares enough to pay attention then in this scene he sees them down he comes over to feed them give them a talk it's also a reminder of something that's really easy to forget in the show which is that we're looking at main characters right and i think the assumption especially in anime is to kind of age up the characters in our minds where they're adults and there is some truth to that you know they probably are more adult than most people because of what they've had to deal with but ultimately they are just kids they haven't really had time to develop and so for them to get like some kind of structure some kind of nurturing care is great you get a little bit of character focus for mikasa i mean she doesn't move very much but i feel like perhaps it's setting her up to move you know i also like the arrival of erwin levi would have been great but you know he's injured the time pressure is really cool the fact that now we have not just Aaron with Reiner and Bertholdt, but also Ymir. So you got this interesting two-on-two -two thing going on. I didn't expect Ymir to be conscious so soon. I thought she would just be comatose for a while. This is a little bit premature to say, because I don't know how it will turn out, but this is an example of something I like in shows where they, they give you what you want, like they set things up, and then they actually go with the most intriguing option, even though it's difficult. The show doesn't always do that, right? Like, they actually mostly don't do that, where something really interesting will happen, the information will, will about to be revealed, and then it sort of evaporates into, like, Annie's crystal or something like that. But here, it seems like we're setting the stage for some interesting dynamics. Like, I, I want Aaron to go with Reiner because I know there's more to the story with Reiner and Bertholdt. I know Aaron has a lot to learn and a lot to figure out. And so this puts them right in that spot to actually get somewhere with that. Now, will they do that? I shouldn't get my hopes up, but I'm pretty sure it will at least create some interesting conversations or some interesting moments, both with Aaron and Ymir, but also with the arriving cavalry, right? Coming to save them. So yeah, that's the end of 2x8. I'll see you next time when we, I guess, get to the forest by nighttime, unless we're interrupted by flashbacks. <laughs>